Hello and welcome. Pastor John here. Uh, today we'll be looking at the book of Esther in the Old Testament. So open your Bibles, please, and turn to Esther chapter 4. Esther chapter 4, verses 8 to 17. <clears throat> it's Esther chapter 4, verses 8 to 17. Mordecai gave Hatach a copy of the decree issued in Susa that called for the death of all Jews. He asked Hatach to show it to Esther and explain the situation to her. He also asked Hatach to direct her to go to the king to beg for mercy and plead for her people. So Hatach returned to Esther with Mordecai's message. Then Esther told Hatach to go back and relay this message to Mordecai. <clears throat> All the king's officials and even the people in the provinces know that anyone who appears before the king in his inner court without being invited is doomed to die unless the king holds out his gold scepter. And the king has not called for me to come to him for thirty days. So Hatach gave Esther's message to Mordecai. Mordecai sent this reply to Esther. Don't think for a moment that because you're in the palace, you will escape when all other Jews are killed. If you keep quiet at a time like this, deliverance and relief for the Jews will arise from some other place. <clears throat> but you and your relatives will die. Who knows if perhaps you will make queen for just the time as this. Then Esther sent this reply to Mordecai. Go and gather together all the Jews of Susa and fast for me. Do not eat <clears throat> or drink for three days, night or day. My maids and I will do the same. And then, though it is against the law, I will go in to see the king. If I must die, I must die. So Mordecai went away and did everything as Esther had ordered him. God bless the reading of this word. Surrendering to God in trials. <clears throat> so the background here is we have the um, last book, the last historical book in the Old Testament, the book of Esther. And um, <clears throat> this is the um, Jewish um, exile to Babylon uh, occurring between 586 to 539 BC. So we can you can see that in Esther um, chapter 2 verses 5 to 7. Um, where we learn about Mordecai and uh, his adopted daughter Esther. So they are exiles, and um, um, Mordecai is looking after Esther. And uh, Esther is, uh, um, through amazing circumstances, is made queen um, at that time. So the events uh, in Esther <coughs> take place during a single year, uh, during the reign of the Persian king Xerxes. Xerxes reigned uh, 486 to 465 BC. So the topic here is surrendering to God in trials. So we want to, in order to understand what's happening here, um, uh, we understand there's a plea um, uh, that uh, Mordecai, um, or um, adopted parent is looking after uh, uh, Esther and, uh, and then trying to seek out her help because um, there's a plot that a person uh, who appears here in this um, in this um, in these events um, has, has, has plotted against the Jews so uh, we're not going to read it but it's in Esther I encourage you to read the entire book of Esther by the way it's very straightforward um, and it's um, real people, real events. Um, it's uh, everything is God's word, and uh, so there's a lot to learn and and, and grow also about the um, uh, the history of the time of the uh, the Persian kings. You can learn in the book of Esther. Um, <clears throat> so in Esther chapter three, verses one to nine, um, there's the um, uh, uh, a person called Haman who, who creates a plot against the Jewish people. In other words, he um, uh, coaxes the, he, well, 
kind of tricks as well. He, he tries to, uh, he, well, yeah, maybe he, he would say he tricks the king at the time to issue a decree to exterminate all Jews. And he has an extreme hatred towards the Jewish people. And that is this plot that we're just encountering in the passage of today. So, um, <clears throat> what is interesting here is that in the entire book, um, a god or a sword as appears is, is not visible as the events unfold. He doesn't seem to be visible. And that's a really interesting part. Um, but he's there. And as it turns out, looking back through the entire book of Esther, we can see his divine sovereign work at uh, hand at work here. Right? There are no coincidences. There's no luck or chance when it comes to our Lord God. Right? Fortune and fortune telling, those that's evil, um, that's of the enemy, that's Satan's trick. Uh, we don't do that as believers, right? And there's no, you know, there's no chance or luck. Um, everything is God's um, sovereign, uh, divine providence. And that's what the Bible tells us and teaches us. And so it unfolds here in the book of Esther. So in this, um, Esther is aware that if she does go to the king um, um, outside of the boundaries that and the rules, regulations have been set that she can be killed um, for uh, disobeying uh, those decrees. However, we, in verse 16, um, we read the ultimate surrender to God um, by uh, Esther, Queen Esther at that time. In Esther 4, 16, we, uh, we just read it, I'll read it again, verse 16. Go and gather together all the Jews of Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. My maids and I will do the same. And then, though it is against the law, I will go in to see the king. If I must die, I must die. God bless you, your last word. So she's determined, no matter what the consequences, to trust in God even though he's behind the scenes and um, to um, surrender to God fully. So as she says, if I must die, I must die. And that's really the, the, um, the uh, <clears throat> topic, also the title here, is to surrender to God in trials. And this is an enormous trial. We're talking about the extermination of um, the um, Jewish... Um, Hebrew people, the Jewish people, the Israelites at the time. So the stakes are very, very high. And um, so, again, I encourage you to, I'm not going to give it away because I want you to open the Bible and explore all these uh, amazing narratives and the events yourself. Um, but the outcome is, is astonishing how it all works. So I'm um, just gathering from this. So... When you go through trials, do you trust in God? God, not like an unknown God or some God out there or gods, but God, our Lord Jesus Christ, right? Do you have a surrendered heart bent towards God? Ask yourself this. If not, why not? If not, why not? Consider that. Turn to God. Cry out to him. That's not like Jesus does on the cross, even as God in the flesh. He calls out to God the Father. It is in his name, our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus, uh, we can, we can uh, you know, say, uh, render it as Jesus, God saves. So Christ is the ultimate expression of surrender and sacrifice. Um, so Paul reminds us here and encourages us to surrender in um, the, uh, the book of Romans in the New Testament, chapter 5, verse 6 to 11. Romans chapter 5, verse 6 to 11. <clears throat> Paul writes, When we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Now, most people would not be willing to die for an upright person, though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who is especially good. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. And since we have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ, 
he will certainly save us from God's condemnation. For since our friendship with God was restored by the death of his Son, while we were still his enemies, we will certainly be saved through the life of his Son. So now we can rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God because our Lord Jesus Christ has made us friends of God. God bless you in his word. So when we face trials and persecution, we are called to surrender to God, to our Lord Jesus Christ, as uh, we learn and read here. May God bless you and keep you.